my dudes, I am back with a new internet analysis video and today I'm gonna be exploring family vlogging, family channels. So before I get into the nitty gritty of it all, I just wanna go back and do a little quick history of family vlogging because there are a lot of people who maybe aren't familiar with YouTube or vlogging in general who would think, why? would anyone ever want to film their children and post that online for strangers? Good question. On the surface, family vlogging is as simple as it sounds. Parents film their and their kids' daily lives. For a lot of these channels, the aim could be just to create some nice kid or family-friendly content, often with some religious undertones, or perhaps even to build or promote a brand. And sometimes as a family channel grows and the kids are really the star of the show, as they often are, they'll create side channels for the kids or maybe have the kids review toys, things like that. So again, going into the history of family vlogging, I think you definitely have to see that it began more in the mommy blogger kind of sphere. Mom blogging or parenting related blogs are very, very popular and it makes sense. You know, moms want to share advice and their experiences with other parents and also sometimes show off their really cute party decorations or their Pinteresty crafts or their cute little baby names like Everly. So anyway, the first family vlogger channel that I can think of would be the Shaytards. A family of six who have been making daily videos for the last four years. Who have now kind of fallen from grace because of the scandal by Shay Carl, but that's another story. But the Shaytards were making family vlogs for years and years before it really caught on to be as popular as it is today. I think family vlogging came across my radar, you know, as someone in their early early 20s with no kids. When I met some family vloggers called OK Baby, I met Oscar and Kira as well as Levi a couple years back at VidCon. I feel like with Oscar and Kira as well as Karen Swan and her family, I think their popularity grew out of the teenage pregnancy on YouTube stories. It became a very, very popular topic for people who got pregnant at a young age to make videos. 14 and pregnant, 15, 16 and pregnant, a day in the life of a teen mom, that kind of thing. Obviously with the number of shows that focus on teen moms and teen parents, it's a popular topic and it makes sense that that would feed over into YouTube as well. But the crazy thing is family vlogging and family channels are so popular these days that it almost seems like if a YouTuber is kind of low in views and hasn't been getting too much engagement that it might be a good idea to have a baby. <laughs> now I'm not implying that people are only having children to get views but pregnancy announcement videos, gender reveal videos, name reveal, birth vlogs, they got a lot of clicks, dude. I'm just saying, it's tempting. You can definitely bring in enough coin to raise that child, hopefully. But there is definitely a huge difference between making occasional content related to your pregnancy or birth experience or parenting in general. There's a major difference between doing that and being a dedicated family vlogging channel. So admittedly, I don't really watch a lot of family vlogger kind of content. I do follow a lot of moms on Instagram, but who doesn't love to see a cute baby once in a while? That's kind of my point, but I'll talk about that later. I think it's nice to make videos about parenthood. I think it's good to share the ups and downs because obviously that's very relatable to other parents out there or even people who are trying to learn before having their own kids. And yes, the birth vlogs and all of that kind of content, it gets me emo. I cry very easily. And it's just like heartwarming content, you know? But I think my personal favorites are the videos and channels that are more geared toward adults and other parents rather than the channels and videos that are aimed at kids. But I'll talk more about that in a bit. So when we refer to vlogging, it's usually filming your real life, even the types of people who kind of have an unreal life. You know, the super wealthy YouTubers who are always going on extravagant travel trips or skydiving or driving their Lamborghinis. It may be surreal content, but it is technically their lives. Like Jake Paul, I choke every time I mention a Paul brother in my videos. But a strange thing that I've noticed with a lot of vlogs and channels that are directly aimed at kids is that these vlogs aren't necessarily real life. They don't have to be 100% authentic. Often they are mixing fictional, scripted, set up elements into your regular everyday vlog. And it's very strange. 
But imagine how confusing that may be for the kids who are watching them. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be referencing a lot of videos from one channel in particular called Sly Fox. Not that they're the only channel that does this, but when I found their channel, I found a lot of these elements that are surprising. So I just wanna give some examples that yes, come from their channel. A lot of these family channels geared at kids, in addition to their daily vlog, regular type of videos, include viral kid-friendly elements that don't make much sense to adults, but kids click on them like crazy, including Fortnite, slime, 24 hour or overnight challenges, the game master thing, which I don't even know where to begin with that. Mystery boxes or anonymous mail. Hackers are very popular to include in videos. Weird clickbait like someone broke into our house or our car or we were robbed. Is it just me or is this clickbait really weird? Especially when you consider that it's aimed at kids. Like a lot of these topics are very creepy and I get that kids like scary content once in a while, but it's just strange. And again, you have to remember, the kids who are watching this content, a lot of them are literally as young as toddlers and babies. They don't know the difference between what's real and what's not. Especially when this family, these adults who talk to them and go through their day and show off their kids, when they're saying, oh my God, someone broke into our house. Look at this security footage. I hope someone didn't try to like break in again. What the heck, not again. Jaden, I think somebody broke in again. Dad. What's wrong? Why are you crying? We might have to call the cops again. <sighs> We're so scared. Who could it be? Give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. I can just see like the evidence where like somebody tried to like, right they tried to pry it open. These kids straight up think that your house is getting broken into. They're probably worried about you. And when you go through the comment sections on these channels and on these videos, you can tell that everyone watching or a lot of the people leaving comments are kids. Some of them almost illiterate because they're children. They're young. Lately, there has been a lot of controversy on YouTube about this type of content. Specifically, I watched Nerd City's video about Jake Paul's content, sorry to keep mentioning him, but when you're talking about content that probably shouldn't be watched by children, but is aimed directly at them, you have to mention Jake Paul. And then there's the whole weirdness of like YouTube kids. I don't know if you guys have heard about this, you probably have, but there's a very creepy, dark, sinister part of YouTube kids some of which is just auto-generated content made by literal bots that put together all of these popular terms, characters, into this weird mishmash that can be very eerie to watch. And then there are people who are intentionally taking children's content like Peppa Pig and making it horrifying. Like, oh, Peppa Pig kills all of her friends. It's scary what kind of content is being made for kids and being directed at kids when they watch YouTube. But the strange thing is these parents, these adults who are running these family channels and making this content with these trends, they're almost doing the exact same thing that the bots do. They're just grabbing any combination of viral things and trying to put them together to get their video views. Someone broke into our house and gave us a mystery box full of slime. Literally anything that'll make a kid go, oh, I love that. I can barely read, but I see slime in the thumbnail. Now I'm sure not all of these videos are bad. Just because they're using viral or trendy things obviously doesn't make them bad. You could say that they're just using their imagination and that kids love these things for some reason and they enjoy these videos, so what's wrong with it? It's just strange. Some of these scenarios are creepy and scary and the kids aren't really given a warning. It's not like at the beginning of the vlog they're saying, by the way kids, something spooky is gonna happen and by the way, it's not real. They never give those kind of disclaimers, so I worry about that. So again, when we're looking at the Sly Fox family channel specifically, I was just so baffled by the mix of their content. There was a lot of that viral random kind of stuff, but then there was also a lot of their videos putting their young son, starting at the time he was in preschool with Colin Sav, another very famous family channel, their daughter, Everly. They're putting these kids together and making so many videos focused on their crush, first crush. First date, preschoolers first secret crush with Everly, surprise love letters, mini colon salve. Now I obviously haven't watched all of these videos because who has the time? But I try to see, you know, what happens because based on the title and thumbnail, I think this video may be focusing on these kids, these preschoolers with their intense relationship. 
created by their parents for the purpose of clickbait. <laughs> but no, in the video, it's just the kids hanging out. Or you can tell when the parents are trying to kind of encourage them to do something or specifically look at each other for the thumbnail. The coaching is very strange. Like in this clip, the kid asks whether he should marry Everly or pay. I don't know who that is. Caspian, what were you saying in the car about Everly? Caspian, what were you saying in the car about Everly? But you could tell by the way that he's looking at the camera person and his mom that he was probably told to say that and then he says it. And then in a lot of the videos, Cole, Everly's stepdad, plays this like jokingly but serious overprotective dad, which I guess is funny-ish, not really, if you've got like a teenage daughter going on her first date, but these are literally like kindergarteners who are obviously being told to hold hands for the camera, for the thumbnail, for the clickbait, and then in the same video, being yelled at and being told not to hold hands. And then Cole threatens to spank the kid. It's, it's so weird. I don't give her spanking. Spank it. Yeah, yeah. Not lesson. you, not you. Not you. <laughs> are you guys holding hands again? What are we gonna do about this? What are we gonna do about this? Obviously, a lot of parents and adults, they'll make jokes, you know, when you see little kids together. Oh, you guys are so cute. What if you get married when you grow up? I guess, whatever. We can debate whether that's weird or normal or not later. But it's strange that it's become such a recurring element in so many of their videos. Over the past few years, they keep bringing this back. And obviously, it's just a device used to get these kids to click on their videos because these literal kids who are watching it ship them. These other five-year-olds are a fan of these five-year-olds dating. I don't know. So in combination with kind of the regular everyday content that they film, and then the weird setup situations, like their house is getting robbed, and then there's something that's probably my least favorite thing of all family vlogger videos, is when there's the exploitation of a tragic event. There are so many ultra dramatic titles and thumbnails involving people getting hurt, going to the hospital, dying and i feel like it's just so wrong to exploit that for clickbait like obviously people on youtube make content about these serious things or tragedies but it just feels icky to have a thumbnail of like an overly exaggerated crying face making your child cry for the thumbnail there's this sly fox family video where they go to a trampoline park and the older daughter has this doll and she's playing with it and she drops it and they're bouncing it around and they're laughing about how people around them think that it's a real baby. Hello? And the dad's like encouraging it. He's like, oh, how funny. People think this is real. They think it's some kind of prank. I noticed that the doll is what's called a reborn doll, which is like the most realistic looking and feeling doll on the market. And the kind of messed up thing is that those dolls are often purchased by older women and mothers who have lost their babies, either through miscarriages or stillborn births. And it's just very messed up to me to use that kind of a doll for a weird prank and make strangers think that a baby is getting injured at a trampoline park. And then Cole and Sav made a video called, we found out bad news about Savannah's pregnancy. And obviously people get concerned. Oh no, what could be wrong with the baby? You find out Savannah has gestational diabetes, which yes, that is something to be concerned about, but it's not the worst thing. And I just think they overhyped the drama of it for the clickbait. You could easily change the title to, we found out Savannah has gestational diabetes. But lots of the kids in the comments literally said, oh no, I thought the baby was dead, I'm so glad. I feel like it's just messed up to clickbait children who are invested in you and invested in your family, invested in your pregnancy. So this was a long enough video. I have a lot to say about family vloggers, actually. It's something I've been thinking about for a very long time. I would love to do a documentary on family vloggers, actually, but not today. There will be a part two to this video in which I would like to focus more on kind of the privacy issues involved in family vlogging and whether it's right or wrong to film so much of your children as babies and kids, but that's for another video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe. I will be continuing to make more internet analysis videos. Make sure you share this if you like it. What kind of clickbait could I think of for this video? Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'm currently in England, by the way. I forgot to mention that. That's all for now. Okay, thanks, bye.